I'm Sharif, and I'm a level one chef. Hi, I'm Julie, and I'm a level two chef. Hi, I'm Danielle, creator of Diversity Kitchen, and I've been a professional chef for 15 years. So these biscuits, I've been trying to master for years, but we'll see, we'll see today if I was able to get the recipe right. Don't kill me, Grandma. I've done a number of basic skills before, so when they invited me to come and do four levels, I was like, of course, I'm down. I mean, I didn't know I would be coming in as a level one chef. I saw myself as like a level five, scientist level even maybe. No. <laughs> I'm a cooker, not a baker. And now I'm trying to move out of my comfort zone and make something that I haven't made before. So when I was looking at the different recipes, I realized that the ingredients were pretty similar to the fried dumplings that mommy used to make for us growing up that come right from Jamaica. So it's a different cooking method, but a little similar, so I think we'll be okay. I love biscuits because I remember being a child and making biscuits with my grandmother. It was nothing fancy, but I knew that they were gonna come out hot and flaky, and it was the perfect way to start my day. I created this recipe when I was in culinary school, and I love biscuits, so I took a lot of time to do my research to make this recipe perfect. We're gonna start now by making the dough. Here's my flour. flour. I use cake flour as well as all-purpose flour. And the first thing we're gonna do is just combine all our dry ingredients and kind of whisk them together. There's the leavening agent. So I have my baking, baking powder, powder baking my baking soda, soda salt, salt, and then I always add a touch of sugar. because everything needs to be just a little sweet. And now is the fun part, the butter and the lard. And you wanna make sure that you use frozen butter because you don't want your butter to be too soft because then it won't mix right. We're gonna add melted butter. Keeping and maintaining that the butter is chilled is what's gonna help your biscuit rise. So now I'm gonna grate the butter into the flour. Can't go wrong with butter. I'm gonna blend the butter into the flour using my two butter knives. Really, you wanna make sure that the butter is all throughout the flour. You all know me by now, I'm handsy. So you gotta make a very sort of pebbly, get that in there, want that richness of the butter. I like to coat the pieces of butter with a little bit of flour. I'm gonna use my fingertips. My grandmother always used butter knives. I don't know why, and I didn't ask her that when I was getting the recipe. Uh, the reason you don't use your whole hands because if you use your whole hands, you can melt the butter. I think it's a southern thing. Now it's time for the lard. Put it in here with the butter. Or same thing like before, that the flour coats the lard. So I'm gonna add my honey into my buttermilk just to create like a honey buttermilk mixture. I'm adding the vanilla extract in now. Now, what we're gonna do is make like a little... Create a nice like little a well, well in the middle. Almost like a little donut hole. And now I'm gonna add my buttermilk. And making sure that your buttermilk is also cold. So we're working with cold butter, cold lard, and cold buttermilk. That's our moistening agent, our sour cream, we are going savory. Mm, my favorite, chives. The mixing is very important. I'm not sure what happens when you overwork the dough. I just know you're not supposed to. If you overmix your dough, you're gonna have tough, hard hockey puck biscuits. Not to say that it's not gonna be good. It's still gonna be good because you have the flavor of the butter and everything like that. The dough we want is not gonna be a smooth dough, kind of a shaggy dough. A shaggy dough means it's not really smooth. It kind of just comes together as that shaggy mass. See, this is some perfect shaggy biscuit dough. Now that we made our dough, we're gonna shape it into biscuits. So now I'm gonna add some flour to the surface. Lightly, lightly dust. flour it. Be careful with how much flour you add onto your counter because if you add too much, then you're gonna dry out your biscuits. And I'm gonna lightly work it. So I'm flattening it and folding it. And I'm just gonna do this like six, seven times. I pretty much do a rectangle about eight by five inches. And then I will start a lamination process. So lamination simply means that I'm layering my dough. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create layers of butter and flour in between. Along with my leavening agent, this is what helps create that flaky and tender biscuit. So now it's time 
to actually place our biscuits on the parchment. This is a drop biscuit and it's kind of fun, you'll see. We just, all you need is your two hands and two big spoons. You've got about a big spoonful. All you do is you drop on your parchment. Now I'm gonna cut my dough into six biscuits. I'm cutting them like this because we want them to be square shaped. I like to use a fluted cutter. Go ahead and punch and then I'll just place my biscuits on top of that parchment paper. So you're probably saying by now, Julie, these don't look like Pillsbury biscuits. They're so rough looking. And that's right, they're not. These are homemade, delicious, non-perfect, this is just how we like things biscuits. Our next step is to brush them with a little butter. And look, you just touch the tops. What I'll do is I'll take egg wash. The egg wash helps the biscuit slightly brown in the oven. I just get the top of it. I'm not really coating down the side of the biscuit because sometimes that'll also weigh down the sides of the biscuit. I have some hot Hungarian paprika. It's gonna give us a little bit of a kick. You know I like my pepper. You know I like things a little spicy. But since I'm turning this into a little sweet treat, I'm gonna go ahead and place a little bit of this coarse sugar on top. Before they go in the oven, I wanna make sure they are chilled, that they are cold. I'm gonna chill these down in the refrigerator for about five to 10 minutes. I set the oven, I preheated the oven to 400, 400 degrees degree for 10 to 12, 12 minutes. minutes. You can do 10 to 12. I like to do 15 minutes because I like them to be really golden brown at the top. And I'll see you on the other side with some yummy savory biscuits. Now that I have my biscuits in the oven, I'm gonna get started on my gravy. The bacon adds a nice saltiness. So I'm just gonna add the sausage right in. Let this fry in the bacon grease. Add my onions in and allow these to cook together. Let's make a little honey butter. I've gotten this stick of butter and it's very soft. I'm going to add honey and this will be the perfect little surprise inside. I'm gonna make my strawberry topping. First thing I'm gonna do is grab my strawberries and then I'm gonna chop them up into a small dice. Just a touch of lemon juice, add some sugar. My final ingredient is my vanilla bean. And it's not a lot, but a little goes a long way here. And let this chill and sit for a minute just so some of those juices can come out. I'm gonna add my bacon and my butter. This is just some real southern goodness right here. All right, now I'm gonna add my flour in and my half and half. And the half and half makes it really creamy. Yeah, see that's the good stuff. Now we getting, as my grandmother would say, now we getting down to the nitty gritty. I have a secret weapon, which is flaky sea salt. Is it just really explodes the flavor of the honey. It enhances it, and again, gives it just a little bit of that grown-up edge. Now that I've let my strawberries sit, I'm actually going to take half of that, blend it, to make more of a sauce, and then I'll pour that back into my strawberries. So I've got some nice sauce, along with the pieces of strawberry. Here I have my crushed red pepper, I have my rosemary, I have my thyme, and I have my basil here. Salt and pepper, taste test. I outdid myself. And I'm not just saying that because I prepared this. Are y'all sure I'm level one? My next step is to make our whipped cream. I always start with chilled heavy cream, powdered sugar, and my vanilla bean paste. Now comes the muscle work. Voila, look at that. Did that take long? No. Now that our biscuits are ready and our toppings are finished, we can go ahead and assemble it. Okay, here are my beautiful biscuits. They look really good. Now, they look a little funky and weird shaped, just the way I like them. Just a couple final touches to take the taste into the stratosphere. Now this is when you want to add your butter. This is the make or break. Never have too much butter. All right, now I'm just gonna drizzle a little honey on top. And you like to do this while it's still hot so the honey bakes into it a little bit at the end. Cutting your biscuit like this, take a dollop of butter. Butter, 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 butter. So I'll just put the tops on the side and I'm gonna take a little bit of my strawberries. And I like to go ahead and make sure that kind of soaks up in the middle, right? I'll go ahead and add a touch of the diced strawberry in the middle. And then I like to put a little bit of cream on the inside. Now 
for the gravy. Again, I'm warning you, this is a cheat meal, only once a week. You will pack on the calories, and then the saltiness, the salty spiciness of the gravy, mixed with the flakiness and the sweetness of the biscuit, just can't go wrong. You know, you can kind of angle it like that so that you get a sneak peek inside. And of course, we're not done. This is your serving of fruit for the day. <laughs> I've shown you guys all I can show you. It's up to you now. You gotta take it and run with it. These are my biscuits. And this is my biscuit. And these are my biscuits. All right, now is the moment of truth. You know what, I'm just gonna dive right in. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, grandma works for me. Mm. Grandma, grandma. Eyes are closed, you know what that means. Mm, yeah, so good. Mm. The term biscuit means different things around the world. Here in the US, biscuits are a quick bread because they're quick to mix and bake and are made light by the addition of chemical leaveners instead of relying on the slow fermentation of yeast. They don't include eggs and get their final characteristics by the way the ingredients are mixed. They're tender and soft and can be tall and flaky. Let's see how each of our three chefs made theirs. Sharif made a traditional Southern style rolled biscuit. A rolled biscuit will have uniform and symmetrical shape with high volume, which is exactly what Sharif made. Sharif's dough included all purpose flour, which has a medium amount of the proteins that form gluten and is designed to be used in various applications from cakes to bread. Wheat grown in the Southern states tends to be lower in protein, which is the perfect type of flour for tender and soft biscuits. We don't want too much gluten development, enough to give structure to the biscuit, but not enough to make it tough and chewy like bread. He also included some baking powder, salt, butter, and honey. Baking powder is a mixture of sodium bicarbonate, or baking soda, and an acid salt, such as sodium aluminum sulfate, which releases carbon dioxide first when it's combined with water. There's a second reaction that produces another release of carbon dioxide when the reactants are heated, giving lightness and porosity to Sharif's biscuits. Buttermilk is essential for a Southern style biscuit. It's the watery byproduct that's left after cream has been churned into butter. It's acidic, so it assists the baking powder with leavening. Honey is a delicious way to add a touch of sweetness to Sharif's biscuits and also helps them to brown and crisp on top. I can smell the vanilla and the honey on the inside, not just on the outside where I drizzled it. I can smell it. it smells amazing. Julie made savory drop biscuits. Drop biscuits require no rolling, folding, or shaping. As the name infers, dough is simply placed on the baking sheet with a spoon. Drop biscuits have slightly more liquid than rolled biscuits and tend to be irregularly shaped with a rougher looking top and more coarse texture without the flakiness that you would find in a rolled biscuit. Uniformity is boring. She used similar ingredients to Sharif, but added some savory components like chives and hot paprika. Julie also included sour cream, which is about 20% milk fat. There's enough water to make it soft and spreadable. She used almost equal parts sour cream to flour. This is important because the water in the sour cream hydrated the starch and proteins in the flour. Like buttermilk, sour cream is acidic, but much higher in fat content and more viscous. Julie melted her butter so that it was easily distributed throughout her flour mixture, which gave her a tender crumb compared to our level one and three's layered biscuits. But they're gonna taste like delicious biscuits. Crumb is the portion of any baked good between the bottom and the top crusts. A tender crumb is soft and breaks apart easily when you chew it. It also has a tighter crumb, which means that it has tiny holes where the carbon dioxide escaped once the structure was set. Julie also relied on baking powder and alkaline baking soda, which needs to be combined with an acidic ingredient in a recipe, like Julie's sour cream, to produce tiny bubbles of carbon dioxide during baking. Without the acidic ingredient, baking soda, or sodium bicarbonate, can take on a soapy off flavor and turn a gold yellow color as it's heated and converted to sodium carbonate. The acid mitigates this off taste and color. Using a combination of chemical leaveners is really like taking out an insurance policy for ensuring your biscuits will rise. 
Yes, because I always do that. Danielle used cold butter and lard, which is fat rendered from hogs. It's a combination of monounsaturated and saturated fatty acids, so it has a smooth quality when used in Danielle's biscuits. Danielle used a one-to-one -one ratio of all-purpose flour and pastry flour, which is the flour that's the lowest in gluten proteins. So it makes the dough a little softer. Every aspect of Danielle's recipe is designed to yield a tender, light, layered biscuit, including her use of both baking powder and baking soda. She also added buttermilk like Sharif did, but in this case, the buttermilk acts as the required acid for her baking soda, as well as a bright acidic note, which will balance her macerated strawberry topping. Sharif used a modified biscuit method when making his dough. He added frozen grated butter to his flour mixture and used two knives, which helped to cut solid fat into small flour covered pieces. When rolled, these pieces form layers of fat and flour and give a layered effect. He then lightly kneaded his dough and formed a ball. He used the sharp edge of a knife to cut the entire rectangle of dough into six biscuits. Square biscuits don't need a lot of space between them, but you can space them out. This is how Sharif baked his biscuits, and they were crispy and delicious. Perfect. Julie mixed her dry ingredients, added her melted butter, and then the sour cream and chives. She had a shaggy dough, which means it was well mixed, but still lumpy because of the higher moisture percentage. This makes it hard to knead, which is good in this case. The more a dough is mixed, the more gluten is developed. A high gluten dough becomes smoother, but also leads to a tougher biscuit. She dropped equal amounts of her dough onto a parchment lined sheet. Danielle lightly kneaded and rolled her dough. She also folded it in thirds and turned it, ensuring that she has many layers in her finished biscuit. She also used a special fluted pastry cutter that makes a beautiful fluted edge to her biscuit. The fluting exposes the increased surface area to the dry heat in the oven, making her biscuits particularly crispy all around. I just find it to be fun, right? It's something different and it adds just a touch of presentation to your biscuits. She added an egg wash to her biscuits, which causes Maillard browning from the reaction between the sugar and amino acids in the egg proteins. It also adds a shine and helps the coarse sugar that Danielle sprinkled on top adhere nicely as her biscuits rise and bake in the oven. The sugar also adds a sweet, crunchy texture. All three of our chefs baked their biscuits in a hot oven, 400 degrees Fahrenheit, for between 10 to 15 minutes. Baking in a hot oven allows the water in the dough to turn to steam quickly, helping to separate the layers of dough as the fat melts. Sharif and Danielle's biscuits will rise straight up. Julie's will expand from all sides. Julie's won't end up as high as the others based on the way they incorporated the fat into the flour mixture, but they will all turn out light, crispy, full of flavor, and a perfect palette for adding your favorite Topping to. I told these people I was level two. Next time you're in the mood for a sweet or savory biscuit, we hope you'll use some of these ideas from our three chefs.